Greetings, everyone. Professor Zeeb here, and welcome to another audiovisual lecture. Uh, this time, we're going to look at a very classic landmark type study, uh, which is known as the strange situation. So we're going to build on that last bit about attachment. Remember, we said that attachment is kind of like a warm, intimate relationship that a young child often has with their caregiver. So now we're going to look at a study uh, that actually attempts to identify different attachment styles in children because we've we have found uh, certain connections between attachment types and their functioning later on or their developmental course. So it's kind of important to, to understand that. So let's take a look here. Let's go to our, our slides. All right, so we're gonna talk about this very famous study. Uh, and this one is called The Strange Situation. It's always kind of an interesting title to a study. Uh, and you'll kind of see why uh, it has that sort of nickname. This was a very famous study uh, conducted in the 70s by Mary Salter Ainsworth, okay? So keep in mind that this study has been replicated in several different ways throughout the years. And so we really think it's, it's pretty consistent for the most part. So we've seen similar results. And so let's kind of walk you through how it works. So it's kind of complicated, but uh, once you kind of get Get to used to it, it's, it's not too bad to understand. So I'm going to put the sort of flow chart here to kind of <clears throat> explain what happens in the study. Now keep in mind, uh, most children involved in the study are about one or two uh, in the infant stage. And remember the key here is to identify what we call their attachment style. And so once again, this study attempts to do that. So in the beginning of the study, as we see here at the top, uh, a parent and a child are left alone in a room. So typically it's gonna be mom, but not always. The point is, is that's a parent and a young child. <clears throat> and there'll be toys strewn about the room and so forth. And so they kind of just sort of note the interaction between the parent and the child. Remember, they're trying to gauge the attachment level between the parent or the caregiver and that particular child. Child is encouraged to explore the room without parental participation. Once again, just kind of noting what is the connection between that parent and the child. For example, is, is the child constantly checking in with the parent? Are they completely oblivious to that parent's presence? All of those are signs of different attachment types, and that's uh, one of the things that they would be noted. Then a stranger would enter the room. Now by stranger, guys, I'm not saying someone off the street or they just randomly pulled. Typically, it'd probably be like a grad student or what we call a confederate, which means someone who's in on the study that has uh, agreed to participate. The point is the child's never seen this person before. So they walk in the room, they talk to the parent, and potentially starts to interact with the child. So once again, they're noting the uh, reaction of the child to this new person. You know, for example, do they run behind the mother? Are they warm and friendly with this new person? What is their sort of reaction? The parent is then asked to quietly leave the room. So you can imagine this young child being in a room with a stranger. Uh, what is the child's reaction to mom leaving or the parent leaving, what, you know, being alone with this new person? What is the sort of uh, reaction in general? Then after a few minutes, the parent returns in what we call the reunion. And so they would note uh, the reunion response of the child. You know, for example, do they run with open arms? Uh, very glad to see that parent. Do they even notice, you know, and anything in between. So keep in mind each of these phases is about, you know, three minutes or so, depending on uh, the variation of the study. But at the end of the day, when we look at all the data for that child in all these different situations, we, it starts to paint a picture of basically what that child is like in terms of their attachment to the parent, okay? So, uh, by doing this type of experiment and going through this sort of process, Mary Salter Ainsworth was able to identify different types of children. Now guys, as we go through these, I want you to kind of examine children in your own life. If you're a parent, for example, or you have a niece or nephew, where would you place them if you had to decide which type they would be? Uh, I want you to kind of be thinking about that and be able to identify those types in children. All right, so our first type of attachment is simply called securely attached. And really, quite frankly, this is what we want to see, knowing that attachment is very important to children. And that original sample, it made up about 65% of the children in the study. So most of them were identified or labeled as a securely attached 
child. Let's paint you a picture here. In this particular case, the child uses the mother or the parent as what we call a secure base to explore. What that means is that the parent represents a safety zone that that child can turn to in times of need. Uh, if you guys remember from reading the chapter, uh, that attachment is part of that is being comforted when we're frightened as a young child. So in other words, this parent is that child's safety zone and that would be very observable uh, with this particular child. When mom or the parent leaves the room, there is obvious distress. So in most cases, the child would cry, not always, but certainly there would be a reaction to the parent leaving. Not only that, the child would show a definite preference for the parent over the stranger. So definitely you would see that. When the parent returns, there is definitely a reaction where the child is seeking contact. In other words, they're happy to see that parent, they feel better, all of that is painting a picture of a securely attached child. It shows that there's a, a huge relationship going on between the parent and the child, and it's pretty secure. So <clears throat> to be honest with you, this particular type fares the best later on in life, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video, but this is really kind of what we want to see uh, in terms of attachment. Let's go to our second type of child. So this is labeled as avoidant or insecure avoidant, and this made up 15% of the sample, so a much smaller portion of the children were identified as such. Okay, so this particular child, number one, rarely cries at the separation. So when mom or the parent leaves the room, the child doesn't seem to react or cry, where in this first group, it's pretty obvious the child is unhappy. Secondly, this child, reacts to this new person, this stranger, as if they are their parent. In other words, there's really no difference between how they react to a new person and their own parents. So if you think about that, guys, that's, that's pretty strange stuff. Most, most kids would show a difference between their own mother and, and this new person, if you would. So in other words, they're very comfortable with that new person. When mom comes back or the parent comes back, they avoid the parent at reunion. And that's kind of why they, it's, it's labeled as avoidant. So really, one of the easiest ways to figure these out is the reaction of the child when the parent returns. So in this case, they're avoiding the parent uh, when they return. And they've also noticed that in general, these children seem sort of indifferent and dislike physical contact. Remember, young children love to be held. They love to be hugged and nurtured and so forth. This child does not really like to be touched or uh, to have that sort of close physical contact. So in this particular case, it kind of shows that the, the attachment is not quite secure. There, there's some uh, questions about that. Let's go to our third case here, our third type, known as insecure resistant. This made up 10% of the sample, so even smaller portion, okay? With this particular child, they, sh it, they showed a lot of mixed feelings. Sometimes it's referred to as ambivalent. So maybe they would cling, sometimes they would resist. A little, bit of a, a, a little bit of a mixed bag when it came to this child in terms of their attachment uh, tendencies with the parent. These children also showed a lot of anxiety. So they appeared to be on edge, even at the beginning of the study. So it just seems like there's a lot of anxiety going on with this particular child. When the parent would leave the room, this child was intensely distressed. They would cry, they were very upset, so they did not like being alone with this new person. In fact, they often showed a fear of strangers. They did not like this stranger at all uh, in terms of what they saw in the study. When the parent would return, this is where we see a lot of that mixed bag type stuff. So there was mixed feelings at the reunion. Sometimes they would see contact, sometimes they would resist. So, you know, it's just a little bit of, uh, of everything with this. And we see this sort of resistant behavior pretty consistently and being on edge and tense. The point is that paints a picture of a sort of uh, sketchy attachment style, if you would. Sketchy meaning it's just not quite concrete and uh, secure like we saw in that first group. All right, our last group is known as the insecure, disorganized, disoriented. 
<clears throat> this made up the remaining 10% if you're doing the math here. And boy, if there's a red flag, this is going to be it. So this one's probably our red flag. These particular children uh, seem to not even really notice the mother was in the room or the parent was in the room. In fact, they seem sort of dazed and confused. And that's often why we call them uh, disorganized and disoriented. So uh, they, it's almost like the, the parent's not there or they're not noticing it. You know, the parent would leave and come back, not really much of a reaction. In fact, they often appeared confused at the reunion. So when their own parent walks back in the room, they seem kind of confused by that. In fact, some cases they would actually look away uh, from the parent when they returned. Once again, that's really painting uh, a rough picture of the, uh, the attachment landscape, if you would, because it's showing that there's not much of a connection or a bond with that parent, which we would expect certainly uh, from a one to two year old in most cases. Okay, so keep in mind that that last one could indicate that there's a, a bigger underlying issue. Maybe it's an autistic child, for example, which often have trouble with, with some of that stuff we mentioned. There could be some underlying problem. But in this case, you know, it's hard to say that just based on this, we're saying that the attachment is just simply not quite there, uh, like we saw with the first group, okay? So the reason we're talking about these, the reason that this a study is such a landmark study is because these attachments, which are identified at one or two, seem to foreshadow to a certain extent later functioning and developmental courses. So for example, if we look at these securely attached uh, group, we really see a lot of positive stuff that happens later on. So they have followed these children. So in other words, they were identified securely attached about one or two, <clears throat> excuse me, and they found that they had a lot of social competence. They had really high self-esteem. Once again, a lot of positives here. Positive, positive emotional health uh, compared to some of our other groups. So the point is, it seems that these children uh, in connection to this attachment style fare better than some of our other groups when it, down the road when we measure them in different developmental outcomes. So it shows that once again, that this attachment stuff seems to be very important. All right, so I wanna go ahead and uh, conclude the lecture there. So hopefully uh, this has helped you understand those attachment types. Please know those for the class, uh, for the exam and things like that. And uh, please go on to the next part of the course and we'll see you online and in class.